civil services IAS and IPS. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you, organizers. So it's more of a case that I'll be discussing how reduced ejection fraction and anti-diabetic action of drugs that we've been discussing that exist uh, for so we have SGLT2 GLP1 analogs where you talk of CV superiority, CV safety, CV improvement. Here you have a CV drug which has improvement in diabetes profile as well. Have you looked at an ARNI's aspects? I mean, I wonder why they asked me to look at the ejection fractions only. They should have probably placed it diabetic benefits of ARNI and that would have been a different topic. But sticking to what I've been allotted, uh, let's look, assume that there is a diabetic patient three, three years ago, he had dyspnea, EF of 38, NT-pro BNP-825, uh, obese, and six minute walk of 320 uh, on our knee beta blockers and MRA. So clinical investigations, EF-43 uh, on a regular follow-up, 20 uh, BNP has come down and six minute Im can improve and he can do daily chorus, that's what it is. So, do you think that GDMT should be changed, discontinued? That's the whole perspective. Now, this is coming from the trials that have recently been published. Very often, you will find DCMP started four pillars, patient starts complaining, Saheb dawa mongi che. Then, the, the, you would also tell, let me reduce the pill burden, make it five tablets to four, four to three. Let me combine beta blocker with an uh, ARB and take off his RD. Uh, that's still going to work. Maybe well, certain I'm doing a better job than maybe tell me certain. Let me give that. Is it okay to what is so-called stable heart failure now previously improved to take off therapies like as uh, uh, like ARNI or SGLT2? The reduced ejection fractions are very often more susceptible to hospitalization, and this re-hospitalization probability is very high compared to patients with mid-range ejection fraction or preserved ejection fraction naturally sicker the patient more likely he'll get hospitalized and the event rates beyond a period of five years actually become like almost two to three episodes in one year now heart failure is a disorder that every hospitalization actually means increased likelihood of death if you have reduced ejection fraction they will have 10 year all-cause mortality of nearly 40 percent if you remember pre arni paradigm hf days the median survival was three years then came arni and median survival for patients class three four became five years added as glt2 it became six years now you add finrin on mra uh, uh, alteration then probably seven years but still crt icd is maybe another year still you would lose 40 percent of patients in 10 years i think you save more cancer patients by chemotherapies these days then actually you survive a patient of heart failure if not treated optimally to goal. So if what is so called stable, remember it's like uh, I often give them an example that you have a cancer and if you were to have say CML and you're on a therapy, you are always in remission, you're never cured. Same is the story with heart failure. You may be in remission of heart failure, you may be stable for symptoms, you may be improved for ejection fraction but you are never cured of heart failure. Heart failure is hence a progressive disease. There is always increased risk of death even when you are so-called clinically stable. And because it goes undetected, sudden deaths will happen in sleep. It may happen in activity. It may happen when patient is at peak of his health, morning walk or jogging around or playing cricket. The myth is the stability. Actually, the underlying structural, molecular and drive, uh, uh, which is disease drivers are always there. A patient who has got coronary artery disease, you put three stents, he's got an old MI. That old MI is always there, it's a scar, it's going to stay. It's not going to be replaced by normal healthy myocardium. And hence, NYHA class 2 patients, which you often perceive as so-called low or stable, actually are misrepresented based or misperceived because they limit their activities. What you think as class 1 may be actually be class 2. What you think as class 2 may actually be class 3. As Urman Bhai was mentioning, how much did he walk? These patients will say, So that walking of one hour need not equal to his being class one. He may be just making around, walking around what he was previously covering in 30 minutes. Now he covers in an hour. And he says, I walk one hour. That doesn't equate that he's asymptomatic or class two. So it's for the clinician as to quantify the functional class importantly. And six out of 10 NYHA class two patients which were enrolled in Paradigm Active, they died within 
two and quarter of years, 27 months. So 60% mortality was there. That's why I say median survival was three. And this is for class two, which means I can do day-to-day -day activities. Sometimes I'm limiting my activities. And this is inclusive of other deaths, sudden deaths and deaths from the heart failure itself. So guideline directed therapies are associated with higher risk of mortality even worse in our subgroup of patients. I usually give this dictum to my students. Indian patients get coronary artery disease, diabetes, heart failure, mortality, admission, everything one decade early. Rheumatic heart disease, one decade early, multi-vessel disease, multiple hospitalization, multiple therapies required and usually worse outcome. This is a general dictum across the class of lifestyle disorders that we have because we have genetic problems that we have inherited from the thrifty gene plus we are now adopting to the so-called lifestyle disorders that we have again indirectly inherited from the western civilizations. Guideline directed therapies hence that are primarily to take care include not only to manage the emergency urgent or hospitalization care but also what is important is are you giving the dose that is recommended in the trial. Most of the patients who are, I, I, I discuss with a lot of friends and they say, my favorite drug is carvedilol. I said, okay, what dose do you give? 3.125 oral liver, 1 BD. That's never the dose studied. That's never the dose that's shown to show outcome references. The dose has to be 25 BD, you never reach it. Same is the story a lot of times with Arni, 50 milligram half BD. I heard one of the local companies now coming to plan to launch 25 milligram. I say this is very typical of a Southeast Asian scenario. We get 5 milligram of atorvastatin, somebody can launch 2.5 of rosuvastatin soon. Maybe DAPA flows in 2.5 will also come in Indian market because everybody is happy. Patient is happy, he's taking something, doctor is happy, I'm writing something and pharma is happy, they are selling something. But patient is not getting benefit. That's the big problem. What is needed is reaching the optimal dosages that are recommended and started to show mortality benefit. And that's the case with ARNI. Have you tried to up titrate them to 200 BD? Up titration and introduction of newer therapies and evidence based approaches is what is going to be foundational in preventing an, uh, events that can be expected in these patients with the highest expected benefit only, as I said, for 25 BD of carvedilol or 200 milligrams BD of an ARNI. But are we implementing? That's the whole question when medication are prescribed and 1% actually receive triple drug. And this is not Indian data, this is Western data. If your patients are not, so if you look at the RNE, less than 50% target. So 200 milligram of RNE BD, Carvedilol 25, 1 BD, MRA 25, DAPA 10. This kind of a combo is only 1% of patients in West actually attain this. What to talk about India? That's the problem that at least, but the good thing about RNE is that this is the only therapy amongst the four pillars of heart failure that has shown benefits of mortality even at 50 BD. That's the advantage of this therapy. So after GDMT initiation, discontinuation in evolution HF was very high. One out of four patients discontinued. Patients who discontinued therapy within 12 months were 25% DAPA. Pharmacist will say, diabetes ni godi kem khao chao. And then the patient will Google, Sai, I don't have diabetes, so I stopped this. Big problem that cardiologists nowadays face is the patient not willing to take DAPA and the other problem, a lot of times I feel, the diabetologist not prescribing DAPA if the patient does not have heart failure. And sacubitril army, 25% off, is 38%, 33% ARB, VTA block is 25, and MRA 42. Impact in the outcomes, when we are looked at in the 35% increase if you discontinue the drugs compared to patients who continued at one year. So it's not important. It's like uh, when I, my patients say, saru che dawa band karu. It's like, Diabetes saru che, diabetes ni dawa band karu. Thyroid saru che, thyroid ni dawa band karu. And I mean, aje jam yu che, it's like, rashan lava nu band karu. So, it, it, you cannot be, because mane mara ma vas na thi hao, it's like, nava nu band karu. So, the, you cannot stop a therapy, because you are stable on it. You stop a therapy when you become unstable because of side effects of the therapy. And that's why the risk of readmissions also increased by 40% if the risk of 30 day, uh, if the patient is discontinued, uh, on the guideline directed therapy. If you look at the increased risk all cause mortality 3.8 times, 4.7, 2.9 times higher for those who discontinued ACE, ARNI or beta blocker. Initiation and continuation of GDMT hence reduces hospitalization rate, mortality rate and very importantly improves functional quality life. 
in view of this evidence should this patient now be discontinued no esc tells you that continue the therapies of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction even if they have become what is called as improved ejection fraction ef has become 55 percent patient is dcmp everything is fixed asymptomatic do you stop even then no patients with heart failure even if symptoms are well controlled you need to ensure optimized therapy is continued esc guidelines talk about sacubital valsart now as first pillar it's not as an alternative to asarb asarbs have been relegated to a lower rung compared to arni initiate in all naive patient if patient is tolerating asarb even then switch to arni uh, if they are on as or arb ace guidelines also recommend as the first line for heart failure hospitalization with reduced ejection fraction whether it's a de novo or a patient who's class 2 or 3 who tolerated the impact as i said it significantly ameliorates and uh, uh, ef deteriorates significantly if you discontinue the therapy if the patient is continued the ef does not drop percent and lv and diastolic volumes can return to even baseline at 12 months there were 8.6 percent who were in class 4 and at 12 months 50 percent will become class 3 and hence class 2 patients will worsen at the end of one year and you're not sure whether this adding this therapy again will bring them back to what they were in the previous uh, functional class recent meta analysis showed 30 percent of studies believe that the innovative therapies are more efficacious non-innovative drugs are less safe this is something that we can maybe discuss in the uh, question answer session innovative therapy has got certain benefits the supramolar complex it's a molar ratio it's not 47 milligram of uh, taraju malidelu sacubitral and for, for uh, 53 of uh, uh, valsartan and combine and mix it too that's not arni that's not arni in between you have a hydrogen bond it's a molar ratio it's a molecule in itself it's a molar combo but it's not a mixture of two drugs threefold higher exposure compared to oral administration of the tablet sometime you have 40 percent higher exposure with oral administration in humans which uh, as compared to uh, the valsartan which was original brand bioavailability is compared with the physical mixture is better faster dissolution and hence it's not the same as compared to the generic or so-called equivalent of course there are 230 plus trials more than three lakh patients i was part of the first paper which was published for the paradigm hf we were the center also participating in the same more than 1500 indian patient uh, parts of global clinical trial and 78 lakh patients of patient exposure so to conclude patient was a so-called stable there is nothing like stable heart failure he is a patient in remission discontinuation will reduce the improved ef back worsen his functional class and after gdmt esc guidelines they they continue to recommend in patients uh, with reduced ejection traction even with improved ef to be on the therapy these are the disclosures thank you very much